Hi, everyone. Uh, we're just going to give a, a couple minutes to, to let people trickle in. Uh, so we'll just get started shortly. And I see, hi, Councillor Farr. We're, we're just uh, we're just waiting a couple minutes and then we're going to get started. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you. So and I will um, I'll turn it over to you uh, um, at the right time to to oh, say a few words. It doesn't even matter, but any time, yeah, and it will be a okay. few words. I I look forward okay. to your expert hosting. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> see, you, Alicia. Okay. Do I mute or leave video off too? Um, you, you can mute yourself for now um, and turn your video off and then turn it on um, when, when you're ready to go. I got you. Thank you. Sure. Have a great meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So um, why don't we get started? Uh, thank you very much um, to those who have joined uh, and, and good evening. Welcome to the, the first Public Information Center for the Beasley Neighborhood Road Safety Review. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to participate this evening. My name is Alicia Evans. I am a facilitator with ACOM and I will be your host for this evening. If you go to the next slide, please. Now, before we dive into the meeting itself, I'll just run through a few housekeeping items. As you may have seen on the main screen, um, all of uh, attendees are currently muted and you will not have access to your video function for, for tonight. Uh, we know that technological issues can and do happen, so we appreciate your patience with us. And if you have uh, any issues at all, please feel free to use the Q&A box uh, to ask for help. Um, Tracy will be monitoring this throughout and will do her best to, to give you a hand. Now the presentation portion of tonight's Public Information Center is being recorded. And this recording along with a copy of the presentation and a feedback form will be available on engage.hamilton.ca slash Beasley Road Safety. Next slide, please. We are using Zoom's webinar platform tonight. Uh, with this platform, you are able to control your own views you can change what you see by clicking on the view or view options tab, both located at the top of your screen. And when it comes time to the question and answer period, we will invite your participation through the Q&A box or the raise hand feature. You can access these options through the menu bar, typically, typically located at the bottom of your screen uh, by hovering your mouse. Uh, and if you are using a smartphone or tablet, you just can uh, simply tap the screen and the options should pop up for you. I will run through these instructions again when uh, we get to the Q&A period after the presentation. Next slide, please. Now the agenda for this evening will unfold in two main parts. So after the introductions, the team will provide a presentation overview of the project and the work to date, including the neighborhood survey that was hosted on Engage Hamilton and the assessment of the neighborhood's existing conditions. The team will then present where the study is going from here, including the potential improvements to the Beasley neighborhood, how the potential improvements will be evaluated, along with other next steps. And following the presentation will be the question and answer period. Next slide, please. Uh, this evening, I will be joined by Josip Kafedar, the City of Hamilton Project Manager, Eleni Dekaneas, the City of Hamilton Project Coordinator, Sherry Harmsworth, the ACOM project manager who will be presenting this evening, as well as other city and ACOM staff. Um, they are, we do have a number of people available to answer questions as needed. Now, before I turn it over to Sherry though, I'd like to welcome Ward to Councillor Jason Farr to say a few words. Over to you, Councillor. Okay, thanks very much, Alicia. And thank you everybody for attending. Just uh, briefly, this really is about ACOM doing their thing tonight, uh, which is uh, primarily their thing, getting your input. So uh, welcome to this first of uh, the engagement sessions with the Beasley Neighborhood uh, Road Safety uh, uh, Review. Uh, born of great engagement in this neighborhood. I think not too dissimilar from our plan locals of the past that some of the folks tuned in or be very familiar with, where we also had a, 
a, a prime consultant uh, with a lot of passion and knowledge uh, in civic plan, in this case with Plan Local. And we did our safe streets in our beautiful places across the ward and of course in Beasley. Um, I know how important it is to uh, a lot of folks to uh, slow cars down, but also make our sidewalk safe. And that's why in things like the secondary plan, we focus a lot on, on the pedestrian realm. Uh, micro mobility, uh, less emphasis on autos, more emphasis on micro mobility. Those sort of things are built into part of your neighborhood plan planning in the, uh, of course, the downtown secondary plan. Uh, the Cannon Cycle Track is another great example, but a lot of this stuff has been one off as well. So conversations about getting those bump outs at Mary and those sorts of things. Conversations that I will admit could have gone better over the years with the school and the different PTAs and, and other residents and, and participants in the area. And even in some cases, the school board themselves, some tricky things uh, over the years, I'll admit to there. But this is great that we're doing this. So those kinds of things can be uh, put together in a nice organized package. And I'm sure at somewhere near down the road, based on your input tonight, we'll be able to present and, and win a motion or two to my colleagues at council to uh, actually turn these great ideas into action. So thanks, Alicia. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Alen Eleni is here tonight. Mike, Mike, Sherry from Ecom, and uh, all the other staff that might also be on the call. Important night. Thank you very much for engaging. Thank you, Councillor Farr. Um, I will now turn it over to Sherry Harmsworth, uh, the ACOM project manager, to um, lead the presentation. And Sherry, you're muted there. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm muted. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Alicia, and thank you, Councillor Farr. Um, I, we are very excited to be working with the City of Hamilton on this uh, study, and uh, we are tonight. We're here first to listen. Uh, we want to hear uh, input from uh, the people who have uh, joined us this evening, and we do appreciate you taking the time to to come together tonight so we could, you know, hear hear your questions and hear your concerns uh, and come out at the end with a, a really good study and, and recommendations for, for this neighborhood. So uh, if you go to the next slide, please, Ilya. On, uh, you know, following the motion that was made by Councillor Farr, this is how we got to where we are today. We are uh, undertaking this Ward 2 uh, Safety Neighborhood Review. And it is uh, coming from the feedback that was received that this uh, safety plan needed to be taken a look at for this neighborhood. And it comes under the also the road safety program and the vision zero action plan that are already in place with the city. And uh, next slide there, please, Ilya. Our objectives for this particular study are to look at some pretty key uh, focus items, including the high speeds that are in the neighborhoods, driver behaviors in, uh, you know, is there some low compliance in areas? Uh, aggressive driving is another area that uh, has, has been noted. Uh, safety in many respects. So from collision point of view uh, and safety for pedestrians and cyclists uh, and also in the school zones, uh, sorry, the school zone uh, on Wilson Street. And then, of course, from mobility and making sure that people can actually get around the neighborhood uh, as easily as possible. Um, next slide. Our scope of work is to take a look at um, the existing and future conditions. And to date, we have been looking at existing conditions. We've uh, done a few things, um, and I, we'll run through all of that. Uh, as we go through the presentation. We will then in our next step be taking a look at the, our future conditions and then putting together alternative, um, alternatives for our recommendations. And we'll come back to the public similar to what we're doing this evening to get your feedback on that next step of the project as well. And through this public feedback, we will you know, come up with uh, an implementation plan that will include some functional design plans that the city can then take to, to implement, uh, you know, what we've determined would be uh, useful for, for this neighborhood with respect to safety and, and uh, transportation 
um, options. And next slide then, please. So as part of our existing conditions assessment, um, we are specifically looking in Ward 2. This is just our map that identifies the ward in relation to the rest of the, the city of Hamilton. Um, We'll start out by just talking, uh, Councillor Farr had mentioned, on the next slide, please, Ilya. Councillor Farr had mentioned some of the things that have already been implemented in this neighbourhood and some very close to the neighbourhood. So the Contraflow Lake Lanes is, is one in particular, uh, speed humps. Um, there's a project that's been conditionally approved. It hasn't been implemented yet, but uh, one of uh, Pedestrian Street uh, along Re Rebecca Street, which will be, transitioning from uh, what would be traditionally considered a vehicle oriented type street where now you're looking at getting rid of curbs. Uh, it would be allowing pedestrians to uh, actually come out and to and use the street and you're getting a much greater mix of pedestrians, cyclists and slower vehicle uh, movements. And it's um, something new uh, to this area, uh, and it can have a lot of um, benefits. Um, there's also improvements uh, to the Cannon Street cycle track uh, that have been in place, uh, adding in some concrete barriers to help separate the cyclists from the, the traffic. And then in, just outside of the Beasley neighborhood, there's some new cycle tracks in on Victoria Avenue and some lane reductions on Wentworth Street. So those are some of the things that have been looked at already. And we will be taking a look at how successfully they have been implemented and looking to see if we can you know, make some similar recommendations in this community in other locations. Um, the public survey was completed in December of this past year. And if you'll go to the next slide, Ilya. The, um, one of the main features in the survey was this map. And what we'd asked for was for people who, who you know, were filling in the survey to take some of the, what we had outlined there, um, pins for identifying areas for speeding and aggressive driving, areas where there might be stop compliance issues with uh, drivers potentially ignoring traffic signals or the controls, uh, cut through traffic, um, accessibility issues, maybe there's insufficient sidewalks, whether that was completely missing sidewalks or the actual sidewalk itself is um, you know, too narrow, or maybe it had some issues where it's incomplete or cracking or um, uh, anything with respect to an insufficient sidewalk facility. Areas where there are a lack of crosswalk with respect to, you know, it was a pedestrian having to, you know, go a, a very far distance to actually be able to cross a street. And then the option to just identify some other possible improvements and, and you know, any other comments that they might want to make. So the actual map uh, is, that's shown here on this slide is the one that we did get from the survey. This uh, doesn't show actually every single comment that we received. Um, it, it's zoomed out a little bit because there it was quite a few comments and it, it was hard to, to have it a legible <laughs> map for this presentation. Um, but what we were able to glean from this is that there was several uh, intersections that were very commonly identified by a number of respondents, and that included the Cannon Street East and Mary Street, Cannon Street East and Wellington Street, Wilson Street and Mary Street intersection, uh, Wilson Street and Ferguson Avenue North, Barton Street East and Wellington Road North, Mary Street East and Mary Street North, Murray Street East and John Street North, as well as James Street North and Vine Street. So we took these commonly identified intersections and we've uh, used those in uh, area further down uh, that we will discuss a little later on this evening in the presentation. Um, if you can flip to the next slide, Ilya. So one of the 
good things that I felt about the survey was that we had asked people who were responding to identify how they were actually traveling through the community. And our hope with this was to have a better understanding of the perspective of the comment that we were receiving. So we were able to divide it out between pedestrians, cyclists, and uh, auto drivers. So um, pedestrians and cyclists had several very common um, types of concerns where there was lack of crosswalks, but it was, again, from a different perspective. So if you were the pedestrian, you wanted to be able to cross the street. Uh, if you're a cyclist, the concern was because the crosswalk was missing, there was a lot more jaywalking than, than should occur. Um, sidewalks are too narrow in many areas, and it, most people had concerns with uh, trucks in, in the community. And understandably, because the other comments were that there was, you know, a, a lot of cut through traffic with trucks, they create a lot of congestion and additional noise, and they were just seen to be a, a safety concern. In addition to that, there's other speeding vehicles uh, that were uh, just dangerous for the pedestrian cyclists in the community as well as drivers who just flat out ignored uh, signage, whether it was stop signs or no right turns on red signals. Um, so the, that, that is certainly a concern for uh, both pedestrian and cyclist safety and other vehicle safety as well. Uh, from the driver point of view, um, you know, again, drivers not following signage. Uh, trucks also cause issues for the passenger vehicles in the community. High traffic volumes was another concern. And then street parking taking up a lot of space uh, on already crowded streets. Uh, in addition, some patchwork areas that um, may cause a not such a nice ride through the community and could actually be dangerous too, depending on the, the you know, what it might contribute to. So if you can't see some major bump and you're in there in the winter and trying to drive and, and now you've managed to flatten your tire, that's that's a concern as well. So next slide. Some of the suggestions that we received were uh, you know, quite uh, interesting as well. So maybe some additional always stops needed to be provided, um, building crosswalks in some areas and maybe having those elevated as well and reducing lanes in front of the schools and attempting to slow the, the traffic that's going by the community center. Uh, potentially some additional on-street parking and in the area of the hospital could be beneficial. Improving signage and um, implementing speed humps. Also trying to just lower speeds in certain areas. So maybe we need to take a look at uh, dropping the, the speed limit in the school zone. Possibly police and law enforcement need to uh, be out a little bit more to um, you know, assist with keeping some of the uh, rules of the road uh, <laughs> adhered to. And uh, there may be something with respect to the traffic lights that could be improved as well. And there was quite a few comments that we received uh, on actually just removing trucks entirely from the neighborhood. Uh, next slide. We also did receive some comments that um, we will pass on to the city for them to investigate. They aren't specific to our scope of work. So it's not that, um, we you know, don't think that they're good suggestions. They are good suggestions. They just don't necessarily fit with uh, what we would be attempting to recommend for, for safety in the community. So absolutely adding garbage cans uh, in certain areas, improving um, you know, some of the, the road conditions, although there might be some areas that if they are related to safety, we would still uh, be taking a look at that as well. Um, and maybe some pedestrian amenities benches and, and bike locks and that kind of thing, bus shelters, and uh, some beautification through trees and, and flower beds. And that was the um, main outcome of our survey. And so we've taken this information and again, we'll tie this in with the other components of the existing conditions assessment, which we'll go through next, if you'll, yeah, next one. 
So at the outset of the study, in addition to getting set up to do our public survey, we also started going through some of our background documentation and uh, collecting data to, to use in the assessments. So several of the reports that we've looked at, uh, and this isn't an extensive list, but uh, the cycling master plan, the transportation master plan, and some other plan developments in the study area, some of the documentation on those uh, plan developments. And in addition, we um, obtained the five-year collision data. If there was some specific locations that was a little unclear as to what was happening with the collision data, we uh, drilled down and we requested uh, specific motor vehicle collision reports, which can provide us with some additional information on what actually occurred in a specific collision. And uh, as well, turning movement counts, uh, which give us information on how many vehicles are, are making a certain movement, whether it's a right turn, left turn, or a through movement at an intersection. Uh, we did get some information for potential for safety improvements and also signal timing plans for uh, any of this, all of the signalized intersections in the neighborhood. And uh, next slide, please. We also undertook a site visit uh, with uh, representatives from the city. And this, uh, we did this in the fall before the, the snow appeared so we could have a, a good opportunity to see what was on the ground. And identified quite a few things that, um, you know, definitely need to have a closer look, whether it's missing stop bars or other pa pavement markings, uh, some missing signage, some signage that is just so faded you can't see it anymore, um, bike lane bollards that were missing, some improper curb cuts. And I know one of the things not noted on here, this is just a few examples, but um, absolutely areas that had uh, sidewalks that were too narrow. Um, and also we took a pretty close look at what was happening uh, during the pickup and drop off periods at the, the school itself on Wilson. And um, so, yeah, we have a, a record of all of the observations that were made on site. And we're also taking a look through all of that information to um, come up with our alternatives. So next slide. As part of our existing conditions assessment, we took a look at what was out there for uh, existing traffic control. So this map identifies all of the signalized intersections, stop controlled intersections, and uh, locations of crosswalks. Um, it also uh, is just outlining our actual study area, which is you know bounded by James Street on the uh, sorry James Street North. Wellington Street North, uh, Main Street East, and the CN Rail Line, which is just north of Barton Street. On our next slide, we also, um, if you can flip to that one, we also took a look at what was out there uh, today for active transportation and transit facilities. And these two maps just identify uh, what's there for designated bike lanes, uh, some non-designated cycling facilities, uh, signed bicycle routes, and paved multi-use recreational trails, and then where um, and which bus routes are, are running through the community. And uh, this information we gathered um, so we can have a, a better idea of where people may be uh, both cycling and walking, um, particularly the walking with respect to the transit facilities too, because we need to be able to provide um, you know, facilities once you get off a bus, you need to be able to, to walk to wherever you're going to your destination. Or if you're coming from the neighborhood and trying to get to a bus, you need to have uh, those sidewalk facilities as well to make that trip. Um, next slide, please. And uh, speaking of the pedestrian desire lines, part of that assessment was looking specifically at the school. So we took a look at what would be the five minute and 10 minute walking area from the school and uh, you know, confirming which intersections would uh, you know, have students that need to be able to cross the streets in that area. Um, and also the map on the right here shows some pretty uh, strong pedestrian de desire lines, particularly near the school and uh, at the uh, health, uh, the hospital in the, the northeast corner of the community. Uh, next slide. 
On our collision assessment, uh, this is a component that actually, um, we, we've got a few slides on this one. So um, I'll, we'll just start with the overall collision data, which, um, sorry, excuse me for a second. Um, this map identifies um, multiple collisions within the community. And it was actually a little bit of a surprise just how many collisions there were in a five-year period. Um, all of these collisions uh, were added to the map. And what we did was take a look to see if we could come up with several corridors that would be good representatives uh, of the in entire community. And then we took a closer look at each of these corridors. Um, the four corridors that we selected were Cannon Street East, John Street North, Barton Street East, and Wilson Street. And part of our selection criteria was where, uh, which corridors had the highest number of pedestrians and cyclist collisions. And so we took this information and on the next slide, I'll show you what we, what we drilled down to. So here is where we're showing the highest number of pedestrians uh, collisions at intersections. And the top intersections in the community were the Main Street East and Wellington Street South, Barton Street East and Wellington Street North, Main Street East and John Street South, and King Street East and John Street North. And again, this was from uh, the five-year uh, data collection period. On the next slide, we did the similar um, uh, check for the intersections that had the highest number of cyclist collisions, and that was at Cannon Street East and Wellington Street North, and Cannon Street East and Mary Street. Next slide. So taking all of the information that we looked at up to this point, um, so the, the pedestrian, um, cyclist, and vehicle collisions, the um, online survey, and our pedestrian desire lines, and the active transportation facilities, the transit facilities, we, um, we selected 13 intersections to check uh, intersection operations. And what we will do with these intersections down the road is, um, you know, take a look at comparing operations with and without our, our recommended uh, solutions. So um, it's quite possible that we'll be adding some other intersections in uh, for operational assessment in our next phase. But for the moment, the 13 intersections that we took a look at operations um, are the ones shown in this map and, and listed there on this slide. So what we are, uh, I guess we'll, I'll talk about that in the next step as well. But what we are, are wanting to do is to come up with solutions that we can apply not only to those intersections that are shown in that map, but uh, across the board with the, within the community. Um, so going through all of that information, uh, what we've come up with is the following proposed problem and opportunity statement. And if you'll flip to that, I'm just gonna read this right off the panel here. The City of Hamilton Beasley Neighborhood Road Safety Review seeks to reduce collision rates and improve safety and connectivity by identifying mitigative measures to improve mobility for all travel modes, including vulnerable road users within the Beasley neighborhood. And, um, you know, as much as we were hoping to hear from you on any of your comments, we would also be happy to, to receive any comments on this problem opportunity statement if you think we're uh, not focusing on, on the right things. Um, so yeah, let's continue to the next slide. So talk briefly about our next steps and um, Oh yes, this is a, sorry. <laughs> I thought we were just going to be talking about uh, something different first. So first, yes, talking about some potential improvements. So um, we we did sit down and take a look at some possible improvements. This is by no means an exhaustive list of what we would be recommending, but some of the thoughts that we've had so far are that maybe some of the intersections could benefit from a five-second lead pedestrian interval, 
And what that is, is just allowing pedestrians a bit of a head start to be able to cross an intersection before uh, other vehicle movements are given a green light. Um, definitely some controlled pedestrian crossings um, could certainly be added in some locations that would really facilitate movement throughout the community. Um, we actually think there might be benefit to uh, signalization at a couple of locations um, and potentially uh, changing uh, other signal control or other traffic control from uncontrolled uh, to maybe a stop control. Uh, state of good repair measures, um, that really means some things that need to be updated in the community, such as the signage that is no longer visible or paint markings on the roadway, uh, that those things, if they're missing, could certainly be beneficial in respect of driver compliance. And uh, widening of sidewalks, there are some areas that currently do, do not meet uh, AODA requirements and really do need to be widened. And then installation of possible traffic calming measures, and maybe that's curb extensions, uh, raised crosswalks, and uh, possibly speed bumps as well. Next slide. So what we will be doing, and then our next step is coming up with a long list of potential solutions that the last slide just gave some, some possible uh, solutions. We'll come up with a, a long list and we'll look at what is gonna be the most beneficial and the evaluation criteria that we're going to be using is proposed here. This is not finalized yet as well. Um, will the measures that we be putting forward have the ability to improve pedestrian and, and cyclist safety? So that we think is our number one. If it doesn't meet that criteria, then it's not going to be carried forward. Um, it does it improve walkability and public health? Maybe that might be more of a nice to have, but in, in this day and age, certainly that is a very important consideration. Uh, does it have the ability to improve access to the institutions, businesses, and public places in the community? What is the capital cost? Is it constructible? And can it be easily implemented? Can it be coordinated with other infrastructure projects? Because if it can, that might actually be something that is you know, easier to implement in a certain time frame. So if it can be um, implemented in you know five or ten years down the road as part of another project that might be the best time to have it incorporated. Does it have the ability to accommodate future land use needs? Uh, are there property and land requirements that can actually be very tricky if um, even if something is a, you know what you would like to implement it might be difficult for it to be implemented if say if, for example, it, it impacted some kind of heritage property. Um, are there impacts to on-street parking? Some people liked on-street parking, other people do not like on-street parking. That can be uh, quite a hot topic. And uh, what are the operations and, and maintenance considerations? Um, that one in particular, I think of the curb bump outs because it it definitely can have a lot of advantages for pedestrians shortening the length of a, a crosswalk, for example. Um, but often it can really increase the operations and maintenance costs, uh, particularly with snow plows um, and, and damage that can be caused either to equipment or to the curb bump out itself. So these are some of the uh, criteria that we'll be considering. Um, we will be working with the TAC group um, I didn't mention that earlier, but as uh, part of this study, we do have a technical advisory committee with uh, City of Hamilton representatives. And we have gone through all of this material with them uh, so far. They are reviewing our, our technical memo that's been put together and they will be pro providing us feedback as well on uh, the existing conditions assessment that's been completed as well as um, our evaluation criteria. And they will next be providing us um, feedback as well on our proposed list of alternative solutions. Uh, next slide. So once we get through uh, this 
uh, event this evening, and we do get our feedback from the Technical Advisory Committee on the evaluation, um, the existing conditions evaluation that has been completed. We will uh, be summarizing uh, feedback from both those, uh, from the PIC and from the TAC. We will take a look through all of that information and make sure that we're still on the right track. And then we will sit down and take a look at our future do nothing conditions, which um, you know, takes a look at what, what if we don't do anything, what would happen? And then from there, we can proceed to develop and screen our long list of alternative solutions, come up with our detailed evaluation then of our shortlisted alternatives and come back to a second uh, public information center to, to present that information, get your feedback on uh, what you think our plan uh, is, um, you know, for the community, is it beneficial? Is it something that you like? Is it what you wanna see? Does it meet the needs? And is it something that can actually be implemented and um, in a timely fashion? So, um, it actually benefits the community, both in the short term and the long term. Then we'll go from there to finish off our functional design plans and develop our implementation plan. Um, we're getting close, I think, to our question and answer session. If there, is there one more slide? Ah, yes, the frequently asked questions. So. What we've seen so far, before we move into our, our Q&A session, uh, we just wanted to touch on a few things that we have, we've seen so far uh, multiple times. So one question that continues to, to be repeated is why is there heavy tra traffic using Wilson Street and Cannon Street East? And part of that is that they are currently uh, designated as uh, truck routes. So there is a, a truck master plan that's currently uh, in preparation by the city. We don't have the final report on that. So unfortunately, there's not too much information that I can provide on that one. But we are hoping to have more information on that through the course of our next phase of our study. Um, why are the sidewalks so narrow along Wilson Street in the vicinity of the school? And our understanding is that it's, so far, it's just it's a historical thing. They have they have yet to be updated. So that's certainly something that we're taking a look at in this this study. Uh, why is there no safe crossing on Wilson Street at Mary Street and Cannon Street at Mary Street? And again, it, I believe it's it's a historical uh, thing that uh, for some reason has just not been implemented in the past. And it's certainly it is two locations that we are very much looking at to provide recommendations for for those safe crossings at those locations. How will we address parking violations along Murray Street East between John Street North and Mary Street? Um, what we've done, as because this was raised as a concern, we have passed this information along to uh, uh, the parking group at the city and uh, they are taking a look into this right now. And how will we address speeding issues along Wilson Street in the school zone? And that is a good question. We're still looking at that. Uh, we don't have an answer for that one this evening, but uh, we will be looking at that as in the next phase of our study. So that takes us to, I think, the end of our existing conditions, or yes, our existing conditions presentation. And Alicia, I believe I'm turning it back over to you now to, to facilitate this part of the presentation. Yes, thank you, Sherry. Uh, 